Hi, I'm Adobe Certified Instructor Dave Kelly, and this is another course in the series of free courses on things nobody tells you in Lightroom. In this course, we're going to deal with the Tone Curve panel, which is the most powerful panel in Lightroom. In the Tone Curve panel, you can increase the contrast in your image, you can recover lost details in the highlights and shadows, you can change the colors in your image, and you can use the Tone Curve panel to set up other panels to bring out more detail uh, in your image. So let's get started. The Tone Curve panel is located right beneath the basic panel in the right column of panels in the Develop module of Lightroom. And there are four icons across the top of the Tone Curve panel. The first one is the Parametric Curve, which is the best panel for adding contrast to your image. The second icon, this white circle here, is a, the point curve and it is a combination of the three color channels that your camera records, red, green, and blue. And then the other three icons are for the individual color channels. There's also a targeted adjustment cursor located in the very top left corner of the image. So when we have an image like this, the Lightroom experts are going to tell you that you should you start in the basic panel to bring out the detail in an image. And if I do that, if I want to darken the image and bring out the detail in the bird, I take the exposure slider to the left and it certainly does that, but it darkens the entire image simply because it's a global slider. So rather than do that, I'm going to go to the tone curve panel and I'll take the highlight slider to the left and the light slider to the left and I have brought out more detail in the bird without darkening the entire image. And what I've really done is I've set up the HSL panel to bring out more detail in the image. So I'm going to get the targeted adjustment cursor for saturation. And the way the targeted adjustment cursor works is that any tone underneath the targeted adjustment cursor is the only tones that will be affected. When I click and drag up in this case, you'll see that we're bringing out a little bit more blue in the image and then I'll get the luminance targeted adjustment cursor and I'll drag down and you can see that I'm bringing back a lot more detail in the water. So what I've done with the tone curve panel is I've not darkened the image at all. If you look at the basic panel sliders they're all still centered on their slider bars but now the image has nice detail in the bird and more detail in the water simply by using the parametric curve from the tone curve panel. Here's another image and what I'd like to do is have just a little more detail on the hippo here so all I'm going to do is take the darks to the right and the shadows to the right and now I've got a whole lot more detail in the uh, hippo than I had before. In this image, I'd like to have more detail on the bison, and at the same time, I don't want to lose whatever detail I have down here in the snow. So in this case, I'm going to take the darks up to the right to bring out more detail in the bison, and I'm going to take the lights and highlights to the left, and you can see now I've gotten more detail on the bison, and I also have more detail uh, in the snow. In an image like this, I'd like to have more detail in the white flower, but I don't want to darken the image at all, so I'll just take the highlights to the left until we bring out the detail that I want in the white flower. So you can see that there's a, a lot of things you can do with the parametric curve in the tone curve panel to bring out more detail in your image. Now let's talk about recovering lost detail in an image using the point curve in the tone curve panel. I'm sure you're aware that there are clipping warning boxes in the top right and left of the histogram. And the easiest way to turn these on is to press the J key on the keyboard. When you do that, any burned out highlights in the image will show up as red and any lost detail in the shadows will show up as blue. However, I've got some bad news for you because you can't trust the clipping warning boxes. 
In order for the red to show up in burnout highlights and blue to show up in lost details in the image, all three of the color channels your camera records have to be burned out in exactly the same area. If they're not, if only one or two color channels is lost in an area, then the red or blue is not going to show up in the image. So why is this important? Well, it's especially important if you want to print the image because if you're missing a color channel in an area of the image and you go to print the, the image, the area where the missing channel is going to be will not have the right color in it. So how do we know if we've lost one or two or three channels uh, in the image? We look at the triangle inside the clipping warning boxes and here's how it works. If only one channel is lost, the triangle will be the color of the lost channel. If two channels are lost, then for example, if red and green are lost, the triangle is going to be yellow. If red and blue are lost, the triangle is going to be more towards magenta, and if blue are, and green are lost, the triangle is going to be uh, cyan. So if we look at an image like this, the clipping warning boxes are turned on, but you don't see any lost detail in the image. And when we look at the triangles inside, we know that the red channel is lost in the highlights and the blue channel is lost in the shadows. In an image like this, red and green channels are lost in the highlights somewhere. And in an image like this, the, all three channels are lost in the highlights because the triangle is white. So how do we find out where the lost detail is in an image? In an image like this, this environment in Yellowstone, the clipping warning boxes are turned on, but you don't see much lost detail in the image. So what we do is we hold down the Option key on the Mac, the Alt key on the PC, and we can click on either the Exposure, Highlights, or White slider on the slider bar. The screen will turn black, and you'll see where all the last lost detail in the picture is. Things are a little bit different for finding the lost detail in the shadows. Um, we hold down the option of the Alt key on the keyboard and we click on the black slider. The screen will turn white and you will see where all the lost detail in the image is, but you won't see the color of the lost channels. You will see the color opposite the lost channel on the color wheel. For example, if where the blue is lost, and there's quite a bit of it here, you will see the color yellow. So how can we recover the lost detail in an image like this? This is an image that most experts would tell you is a throwaway image. Obviously there's a lot of lost detail and it appears to be out of focus. And what we can do is we can go to the, the individual channels in the tone curve panel. We'll start with the blue channel and what we're going to do is we're going to put our cursor at the very top corner of the grid. You, if you notice when the cursor is over the grid it's, it's a crosshair but up here it's an up and down arrow. And what I want you to do is watch this the triangle in the clipping warning box here. I'm going to make a very slight movement down and you notice that the triangle changed to yellow. What that means is that the blue channel has been recovered. If I hold down the Option or Alt key and uh, and click on the whites channel, all the lost detail is yellow, indicating that the red and blue channels haven't been recovered. So we'll select the green channel. We'll do the same thing. We'll just make a slight movement down. The triangle turns red, indicating that the gr blue and green channels have been recovered, but the red channel hasn't been recovered yet. Option and Alt key shows that the red has still not been recovered. So we'll select the red channel will make the slight movement down, the triangle grays out. And you can see that all, all of the lost detail in the highlights are gone, but the image is still not, uh, look, doesn't look like it's in focus. So what I've really done is I have uh, set up the basic panel to recover lost detail in this image. I can start by clicking on the parametric curve and I can take the highlights to the left and the lights to the left and you can see now some detail is coming back into the picture. It doesn't look so quite out of focus. So the next thing I can do is go up to the exposure slider and slide to the left and you can see I'm bringing back a lot of the lost detail in this image. It works pretty much the same way 
in recovering lost detail in the shadows. You can see there's a lot of lost detail in this image. If I hold down the Option or Alt key and click on the black slider, that shows you where all of the lost detail in the shadows is. So what I'll do is I'll start with the red channel and I will just make a slight movement up and now you can see that the uh, triangle has changed to cyan which means that the blue and green channels are still lost and red has been recovered. If I option or all click on the black slider there's less lost detail in the image. So we'll get the green channel and we'll make the same movement up and we just move it up until the triangle turns to blue indicating only the blue channel is still not recovered. Clicking on the option or alt key and clicking on the black slider you can see that only the blue channel hasn't been recovered. Remember what we're seeing here is the color opposite the, the color channel on the color wheel. So what I've done is I've recovered all of the channels but the image is still too dark. So I could again go to the parametric curve and I could try and take the darks and the shadows up and recover a little bit more of the detail but I've really set up the basic panel and all I have to do is take the shadows slider and move it to the right and you can see I've recovered all of the lost detail in the image and now I've got actually a pretty nice picture. When I look at the triangle again the blue channel still hasn't been recovered all the way so it can always go back and just make a slight movement up. Now the blue channel has been recovered and I've got detail in the image that I didn't have before. Another place where this technique comes in very handy is with pictures that are outside the five or six stop dynamic range of the camera. When we look at an image like this we know to get the correct exposure on the leopard we're going to have to burn out all of the detail in the sky and that's exactly what happens. So the first thing I can do is to recover that detail is use the same technique. In fact this time just to save time I'll use the point curve and I'll just make a slight movement down and I've recovered all of the detail in that area. Now if I hadn't done that and I printed this picture the only color that would be in the sky would be the color of the paper on which I'm printing. Now that it's recovered I know that it will print white but what I want to do is put a little bit blue back into the sky and this is getting a little bit ahead of myself but if I use the new masking panel and click on it here and then select select sky Lightroom will select the entire sky and so then all I have to do is go down here click on the color picker box and I'll pick blue and then I'm going to take the exposure to the to the left and you'll see as I do that the blue starts to come back into the sky. If I want more blue I can take the highlights to a, a little bit more to the left and um, that's a little bit too much but you can see I end up with a nice picture now with the nice blue sky and the leopard hasn't changed at all. People always ask me couldn't I do the same thing in the basic panel? And the answer is yes, I can do the same thing in the basic panel, but you have to remember that the sliders in the basic panel are global sliders and they affect the entire image. So if I wanted to recover this detail in this image in the basic panel, I would have to move the exposure slider very far to the left and you can see that I did recover all of the detail, uh, lost detail in the image, but now the whole the entire picture is much darker by doing it the other way I'm only going to be affecting the uh, lost detail in the image using the tone curve panel. So what else can we do in the tone curve panel? Well one of the things that we can do that probably nobody has uh, told you is we can change the colors in the image. If we have a nice red flower here and if I ch press or select the red channel I, and then get the uh, targeted adjustment cursor here I put the targeted adjustment cursor over the red. If I drag up I'm going to get more red in the image but if I drag down I'm going to get the color opposite red on the color wheel which is cyan or green. And if I then go to the green and get the green channel and you get the targeted adjustment cursor, dragging up brings more green but dragging down brings me to magenta. And if we then go get a blue flower and select the blue channel 
with the targeted adjustment cursor and put it over the blue and drag down, I'll get the color opposite blue on the color wheel, which is yellow. So, how can we use this in Lightroom? Well, as I've said, we can use the tone curve pin to change colors. And for example, a white flower or white shirt or white sweater can be turned into a yellow flower or sweater simply by selecting the blue channel, taking the targeted adjustment cursor, and dragging it down, and now we have a nice yellow flower. And that nice yellow flower can be turned into a pink or red flower by simply selecting the green channel and the targeted adjustment cursor, placing it in the yellow and dragging down. A blue or purple flower can be turned into a red flower simply by selecting the blue channel also using the targeted adjustment cursor and drag, dragging down. And a yellow flower can be turned into a red flower selecting the green channel in the targeted adjustment cursor and placing it in the yellow and dragging it down. So there's a lot of color changes that can be made using the tone curve panel. Here's a more practical application for it. This is a nice uh, American pelican flying over a river that has a lot of tannin and uh, iron in it. So where the water stirs up, we get this brown colored water. If we want to get rid of that, all we have to do is select the red channel and get our targeted adjustment cursor. We'll place it over here in the brown water. We'll drag down so we're getting rid of most of the red. We'll get the green channel with the targeted adjustment cursor. We'll drag down there. We're getting rid of most of it. Now this time we'll get the blue channel and the targeted adjustment cursor and this time we'll drag up. And you can see that I've got mostly blue water now. If I want to make it even a little bit more blue or, or lighter blue, I can t select the targeted adjustment cursor for saturation in the HSL panel and if I just drag down just a little bit, I'll get a little nicer blue. So there's a lot of ways we can change the colors in Lightroom uh, using the tone curve panel. We can also make some changes in a black and white image. Let's make this lion a black and white image. We'll go up to the treatment bar in the basic panel, click on black and white. Now he's a black and white picture. And if we wanted to get, say, a antique type picture, all we have to do is select the blue channel and then we'll just drag it down just a little bit and we get more of an antique looking picture. If we were then to take the green channel and drag it down a little bit, we'll get closer to a sepia type picture. Going back to the blue channel, if we were to drag it up, more of a selenium type picture. So there are a lot of things you can do to change the colors in, a, in both a color and a black and white picture. So you can see how helpful the tone curve panel can be, uh, whether you just want to bring out more detail in an image without changing the exposure using the parametric curve, or you want to recover all of the lost detail in an image and bring out more detail, or you just want to change the color in some area of the image. A couple of months ago, I watched a Lightroom Summit put on by a group of Lightroom experts. And what was interesting was that none of those Lightroom experts mentioned the tone curve panel except to say that they didn't use it which is really too bad because I think it is the most powerful and versatile uh, panel in Lightroom. All of this information on the tone curve panel and a whole lot more about things in Lightroom that no one has ever told you is available in my new book Lightroom Classic Made Easy. It's version 11 which is the current version also contains the new masking panel. And the book is written to sit by the computer with the photographer and uses screenshots to show you where you should be in, in Lightroom and then uses bullet points to guide you step by step through all of the different procedures and techniques available in all seven modules of Lightroom. The book's available on Amazon.com in both the hard copy and the Kindle version. So thanks very much for watching. Leave me a comment or click the subscribe button. I'll be back with more free courses on things nobody told you about in Lightroom.